for overriding nature's laws. Yahweh makes known his name, his majesty, and his unmatched power to the world. God uses the universal stage to introduce himself, or might I say, to reintroduce himself to the world. The world has a tendency, or should I say, mankind has a tendency to forget God. Even when they remember, and as time goes on, they forget him. Forget what he's about, forget what he stands for. And they begin to slide back into that evil and dirty pit that he took them out of. Know this, the people of the world are keenly aware of who Yahweh is. Don't let anybody fool you. The world knows who Yahweh is from Russia to China, from Canada to Europe, from India to Africa, from America to Iran. The inhabitants of the earth know about the God of Israel as the creator of the universe. They know who he is. Since, since the beginning of time, Yahweh's glory and his handiwork has been on display for all to see. The scripture says that the heavens declares his glory and that the earth is filled with the knowledge of our God. All the world, hear me now, all the world, whether they will admit it or not, have heard of Yahweh and knows that he exists. Oh, they may not tell you about it. They may not admit it to you, but every single person is aware of who our God is. But one day, one day they will be convinced that he is God alone. Every day that the sun shines and the moon reflects its light, these things make known to the world that Yahweh is its creator. Every time that the earth is watered by the rain, and the winds blow across its surfaces, these things also make known to the people of the earth that Yahweh is its author. As Rav Shaul, the apostle Paul said in Romans 1, 20 and 21, he says, for ever since the creation of the universe, his invisible qualities, both his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly seen because they can be understood from what he has made. Therefore, he says, they have no excuse because although they know who God is, they do not glorify him as God or thank him. On the contrary, he says, they have become futile in their thinking and their undiscerning hearts have become darkened. He says they know who God is. But they refuse to acknowledge him or to glorify him as God. Though the world chooses not to acknowledge Yahweh as God, they nevertheless know that he is God. They know his reputation and his fame precedes him. All know him because his name and wondrous acts have been published throughout the entire world. God makes sure, he makes sure that everybody knows who he is. I like that about him. He wants people to see him. He wants people to know him. And he makes sure that his name, his wondrous acts, have been published throughout the entire world. The name of Yahweh and that of his son Yeshua have been published to the furthest ends of the earth so that no man has an excuse. He is renowned, the scripture says, among the nations of the world. Listen to what Yahweh himself said 
in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 11 and 14, he says, For from the furthest east to the furthest west, my name is great among the nations. Offerings, he says, are presented to my name everywhere, pure gifts. For my name is great among the nations, says Yahweh Zavahot, or Yahweh of hosts. He says, for I am a great king, says Yahweh Zavahot, and my name is respected among the nations. You know what? I come to believe that what God said is true. <laughs> he says that his name is everywhere. The knowledge of him is everywhere everywhere and he says everywhere he says offerings are presented to his name isn't that amazing everywhere every country every village every hamlet every backwoods what's the right word <laughs> sorry backwoods place where people can reside there there is the knowledge of God, who he is, what he is about. No man has an excuse. No woman, no child has an excuse to say that I have never heard of him. I don't know of him. I don't know what he is like. I don't know what he requires. Everyone, everywhere. Because this is not me saying it. This is Yahweh himself saying it. From the furthest east to the furthest west, my name is great among the nations. Who, brothers and sisters, is like Yahweh? Who can be compared to him? Even nature and nature's laws, hear me now, are subservient to the wishes of Yahweh who made them. They must obey him. But for mankind and the so-called gods of this world, this is not so. The elements of nature cannot be controlled, cannot be harnessed by them. Nature's laws do not obey them nor do they listen to their commands. This lets you know who God is. Remember when Yeshua was in the boat and the waves was tossing the boat and Yeshua's disciples were fearful that the master slept there at the bow of the boat, sleeping on a pillow, men screaming like women. High, screeching sounds coming from the, the apostles. Yeshua woke up and looked at him and said, what in the world? Saying to them, he says, man up. <laughs> man up. Gird up your loins. Act like a man. Stop acting like a woman. <laughs> he says, where is your faith? you if you're in the same boat with god himself hear me now. if you're in the same boat the same situation with god himself why are you so fearful did not he say i will never leave you or forsake you don't you understand he is with you in your boat he is with you in your situation then why are you so fearful <laughs> when the waves begin to toss the boat and the water rushes in the boat, you act like you're going to fail. You act like you're going to be destroyed. You act like God is not with you. Stop screaming like little girls, he is saying. Man up and be a man. Or might I say woman up and be like a real woman. 